Given the title to talk today about the plight of big cats, which is slightly depressing, but we're going to talk particularly about what National Geographic is doing with its partners to help improve the status of big cats across the globe. So big cats are absolutely central to human culture. For as long as humans have existed, they have coexisted, not always peacefully, with big cats. In fact, there are theories that the presence of big cats shaped the very evolution of people as they learn to defend themselves from these predators, to scavenge meat, and to coexist with top carnivores. The importance of big cats has really echoed throughout the millennia. So the very first figurative art was a depiction of a lion head on a human body. It was carved about 40,000 years ago from woolly mammoth ivory. More than 30,000 years ago, there were amazing cave art drawings, which are very clearly depicting lion behavior. Interestingly, the males don't seem to have manes, but they'll be instantly recognizable to any biologist today. Sekhmet, the goddess of war and of healing in ancient Egypt, was given the head of a lion because it represented the most important animal, the most sort of significant animal they knew. The bravery and the perceived power of big cats has led to them being represented in all kinds of things, heraldry, um, flags across the world from Latvia to Ethiopia, from Kenya to Finland. And that really has translated even today. They are all over the place in our iconography. Many of you will have seen the amazing land seer lions of Trafalgar Square as you walked in today. They represent everything from luxury vehicles to um, clothing brands, uh, entertainment brands, sports teams, armed forces. I went into the toilet and there are lions etched above the uh, mirrors in there. I don't think that was done just for me. And actually the door knocker on 10 Downing Street is the head of a lion. Probably the most positive thing any of us can say about that place right now. <laughs> but this power of big cats is not just mythical, it's not just historic, they have very real power in the modern world. They have incredible value in multiple ways. So they have great economic value in the range countries in which they occur predominantly through ecotourism and also through trophy hunting. They have amazing ecological value because they are apex carnivores and they regulate the populations of smaller carnivores as well as prey populations. And they have real existence or intrinsic value. So the idea across the world that people just like to know we live in a world where there are big wild tigers, lions, pumas and jaguars roaming across wild spaces. But despite that power and value, unfortunately they're under huge threat. So this is a range map on the left of lions, which have disappeared from about 94% of their historic range, and of tigers, which have disappeared from 95% of theirs. Now, as well as lions and tigers, we've got some fairly depressing statistics to share with you. Cheetahs have also disappeared from over 90% of their range, and the remaining range isn't secure. So half of lion and over 75% of cheetah range is outside formerly protected areas. We don't know much about big cat numbers. What we do know is a little bit bleak. So tiger numbers have declined by about 95% over the last century. And we think now there are fewer wild lions left in Africa than rhinos. And we need to get this message out there. And when we look at lion populations, half the remaining wild populations have fewer, sorry, half the remaining lion populations have 50 or fewer animals in them, meaning they're very unlikely to persist long term. There are only six large populations of at least 1,000 animals left. The causes behind this catastrophic decline are predominantly habitat loss, loss of prey, particularly bushmeat snaring, and conflict with local people. The illegal wildlife trade also obviously has a factor for tigers in particular, and potentially increasingly for uh, lions and jaguars as well. But it isn't all doom and gloom. National Geographic has come to the rescue, happily. Um, and in 2009, the explorers in residence, Derek and Beverly Joubert, established the Big Cats Initiative, or BCI, and so far, this has invested in 120 projects across 28 countries, investing in the most effective solutions to protect big cats on the ground. So when you are within one of those projects, I run one of the projects in Tanzania, the most fundamentally important issue, first of all, is to protect people and their livelihoods, rather than starting with trying to protect big cats. In most range countries where big cats occur, livestock is a fundamentally important asset, both economically and culturally. So it's really important that we have to secure people's assets and livelihoods so that then we will prevent the retaliatory and preventative killing of big cats. BCI has funded over a thousand, or thousands I would say now, of these enclosures, including living walls and simple wire fences. They reduce losses by well over 90%, 
and they secure people, their livestock, and ultimately big cats. There are also other solutions for protecting livestock, particularly in the day. For instance, traditional um, specialized livestock guarding dogs. So these, when we bring them into the field, they start off as really cute looking little Andrex puppies and everyone looks a bit doubtful. They grow rapidly to this and they're very fierce at you know, alerting predators that they've been seen and sort of move them away. And also funding guardians, for instance, to protect people and their livestock. They also fund more technological solutions. So this is a system, an alert system developed in Namibia where it uses community data to assess likely conflict hotspots and then blends that with satellite collar data from lions to alert local people when a lion passes into a conflict area. Those people will get an alert on their phone, they can take action to protect their stock, so it empowers people to act and it prevents conflict. Directly protecting big cats is obviously a key part of it, so that is everything from stopping community lion hunts to removing snares from the bush and removing snares from big cats themselves and also poisoning, treating poisoned animals, which is a massive threat to lions, other big cats, and species like vultures. And these obviously have hugely important impacts for the cats affected, but also have population level impacts. So data from the Zambia Carnival Program, which is supported partly by BCI, show that of 39 lions that were desnared, that led to the birth of 145 cubs. And there's just a picture of showing a desnared lion. You can see the snare sort of scar around her neck and the cubs that she had with her pride. But the fundamental and most important part of any of this work on the ground is empowering and benefiting local communities. We've heard how important it is that rangeland outside formerly protected areas, and the only way of securing big cat presence there is to make those local people true partners in conservation and to ensure that the benefits they get from conserving wildlife, including big cats, outweigh the remaining costs. We will never be able to reduce the costs of big cat presence to zero. But I always think of it as like cars. I mean, if you were an alien from space, you would come down and see these metal animals racing around the planet, killing thousands and thousands of people a year. And people not only want them, but they pay large sums of money to have them. And that is because you choose individually to have that, and you, you, it makes your life easier. So we need to get to that stage with wildlife that the benefits clearly outweigh the costs. And so this happens in all kinds of ways across BCI projects, things like the Mama Simbas program with the Wasso Lions, where they engage and empower local women, give them alternative livelihoods through employment, through training, um, the development of lion guardians from um, people who are previously lion killers, making sure that these people get economic and cultural benefit from the presence of wildlife. And it's really important that you don't just give the benefits and you're seen as being you know, a nice conservation project, it's really important the benefits are tied directly to big cat presence. So our work in Tanzania, we focus particularly on providing education, healthcare, and veterinary medicine benefits to the communities. But critically, the local communities themselves monitor wildlife through camera traps on village land. And the more wildlife, particularly big cats, that they can serve on village land, the more community development that they get. And this has now been recognized by local and regional governments as the key driver of regional development and shows that wildlife can be a true benefit to these communities. We have to communicate and engage people worldwide, and this goes from the field where we do remote DVD nights and park trips so people can engage uh, with wildlife, um, education clubs, a whole array of engagement there, including engagement in the West. So for instance, a couple of weeks ago, we worked with BCI to do this missing cat poster in central London to alert people to the fact that big cats are disappearing and critically that they can take action and be part of the solution by supporting the Big Cats Initiative. In terms of impacts, it has had great positive impacts. Big cat attacks are significantly reduced. There are improved livelihoods and reduced poverty as a direct result of conservation action. There's improved future opportunities through training and employment so people get out of poverty traps. And there's greater tolerance of wildlife presence. We know that thousands of big cat lives have been saved and there's improved awareness of and engagement in conservation across the world. And really what it provides is invaluable lessons learned for how we can serve big cats and other species in an increasingly human-dominated world. But major challenges do remain. Unfortunately, even with the best will of everyone in this world, we have very limited resources. So we really have to make tough choices about how we prioritize what we're going to do. Do we choose to save the big populations or do we go for those that are about to blink out? Do we go for protecting the protected areas better or the connections between them? 
And how do we scale this up so we have impacts at a continental and range-wide and global scale? How do we safeguard protected areas? We heard amazing stuff from African parks. We heard this global vision of 30% protection. But how do we do that in a place, in a world where land is such a critical resource? And crucially, how do we do it where we don't impoverish the poorest people on the planet for a resource that ultimately is generally wanted by the richest people on the planet? So how do we integrate conservation and development in a realistic way to alleviate poverty at a global scale? And that really involves translating that immense global value of big cats down to the local communities. And ultimately, that translates into funding. We have to be willing to put our money where our mouth is and the international community pay for the presence of big cats and make it this huge resource for local communities. It is like they are sitting on gold mines, increasingly rare gold mines, and they need to be able to use that resource or otherwise it will be lost for the world. But that means we are looking at several billion dollars a year just for lion range. And you know, it all sounds quite challenging, but I think that's why National Geographic is such an amazing player for this. It has global scope. It has amazing passion. We can reach and empower so many people across the world and get into everything from local communities to government. So I think with the power, the passion, you know, the skill that we've seen today demonstrated, it is really the vehicle that we can go and we can say, not only can we change the situation, scale up big cat conservation, we can do it in a way where we empower local communities, alleviate poverty, and reduce some of our key challenges in the world today. Thank you.